It's the 21st century, and it's time for you to break free from the old ideas, the old beliefs, the old shackles that have been holding you back and keeping you bound in misery and failure. It's time to learn the truth about your power and about what's really going on in the world. Everything that you see and experience is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. Nothing more, but nothing less. Learn the truth. Change your life. Change the planet. Everybody and welcome to another episode of Reality Changer Radio. I'm Dave Dickey, your host, and tonight we're going to be exploring a really important topic, and it's about people who think they've got it handled, and when you talk to them at length, you can see that they don't really have it handled. I've been working with this one woman for a few years now. She works in a corporate environment. She has a very important job. And there's been many, many times when she wanted to change the scene, the scenery, at her work environment in a metaphysical way. Uh, She didn't want to be in this department. She wanted to be near a window. There was a whole list of things. And I worked with her and showed her how to get the stuff that she wanted to by listening to what I was saying. And it was a struggle. Uh, It's been a couple of years now, I'd say three years. And she's making great progress. And, you know, when people sit there and say that they understand that they're in control and that they understand that they create everything... You sit there and you listen to that and you go, wow, this person has really made some decent progress. Okay. But then when that same person starts a new sentence after telling you that with, and you won't believe what they did to me today. You know, I sit there and I just kind of like stare. Because now, wait a minute. Aren't you creating everything that's going on? So if you are, and you say you are, why are we having a conversation about what somebody did to you? Isn't that old school? Finger pointing, the blame game, not being in control, giving away your power. Isn't that what that is? I mean, really, I I equate it to someone who says they understand math completely, even calculus, and then complains about how ridiculous it is that somebody asks them to subtract two from four. It just doesn't make any sense. Whatever topic it is, and this just happens to be uh, universal laws and self-development and manifesting and the law of attraction, but whatever topic it is, if you truly say that you've got a handle on it, then nothing should be an issue, especially when it comes to controlling your day-to-day activities and environment. You know, the hardest thing for everybody to get a grip on is that they're responsible for everything that happens in their life. From getting a raise to getting fired, from finding the girl of your dreams to being dumped Everything that happens to you is because of you. Your external is a direct reflection of what's going on inside of you. Now, I also tell everybody, and I've been telling this lady for a while now, the last thing you want to do is focus on what old school would consider to be negative. Negative talk, negative energy, negative vibration, anything like that. You want to take your attention away from that as much as possible and focus on the positive stuff. 
And I'm always not one of those people who say, well, just think positive and everything will be fine. Because that's not how it works. You want to stay focused on the positive so that you don't give any power or energy to the negative. But then you still have to take action. You still have to formulate an idea, plan it out, do your goal setting, do the whole thing. It's not just sitting around going, wow, everything's peachy keen, and then you just go to bed. It doesn't work that way. But my focus tonight is on people like this lady who will sit down and have intense conversations with you about how they realize that they did something to themselves or, you know, uh, this guy sent me this email and it really agitated me and all of this. And, and then, you know, in the next breath go, yeah, I understand. I create all this. But they want to have, excuse me, they want to have a conversation about what they supposedly have gotten over, but apparently haven't, because you can't, you can't have both. You know, you can't drive north and south at the same time. And if you can, shoot me an email, because I want to see that road. You can't say that you understand that you create everything and then say, yeah, but just let me tell you what they did to me today. They didn't do anything to you today. You did it all. There is nothing to talk about when it comes to what they did to you today. And I think a lot of this comes down to when we're children with the old school programming. And again, you know, all of this will change in the next four or five generations and these conversations will be a moot point. But I think it actually does come about, you know, uh, the environment and everything that happens around a child, you know, is absorbed by the child. So when the child recognizes that 90% of the conversations are about negative stuff or the blame game or lack of control or general lack, lack of money, lack of food, lack of anything, then a perception is created. And that perception is that if I desire to talk to somebody will bond quicker if I complain because that's all of my conversation. How many people do you know that the only time they talk to you is to complain? They got nothing else. And you sit there and you just go, oh, wow, really? Can you just like leave? You know, sometimes you don't say that. You say it in your head, but sometimes, you know, people say it out loud. I don't want to hear it. Get away from me. And that's what I encourage everybody to do. If you've got somebody who wants to use you as a crying post, don't take that on. Explain to them that you're not into that kind of thing. And if they want to talk about something else like the weather, but not how hot it is or how cold it is. You see, when you start eliminating the negative conversations from your life, you will find that you have very little to talk about. And I think that's the issue here. We desire so much to have a conversation with somebody because that's how we grew up. We saw people talking all the time. And we saw them talking about their jobs and their love lives and everything else. But what we saw most, more often than not was a heavy mix of complaining. Wow, if I could only do this, which infers that you can't do that. And we all know you could do anything. Well, you know, if only they'd stop pestering me, if only he'd stop yelling at me, if only they would give me a break. Give me a break. Give yourself a break. You see, part of growing, an important part of growing, is understanding where, how you get where you are. If you don't know how you got where you are, how are you to watch out for it later on and control it. It's very difficult. You need to know where you come from, which is why I always say that you should analyze your programmers past lives and what environment they grew up around. 
you know, forgive them, of course, because they only did what they were programmed to do. But do the research, become your own personal scientist and do the research on your programmers, whoever they may be. You know, if you've got a best friend that you've had for 20 years, I got news for you. They've been programming you. And it comes in, we allow it to come in sometimes, and other times it's just by osmosis, like babies. You know, they're not making conscious decisions to listen to mom and not listen to dad. They're listening to everybody. So whatever it is that's floating around in their universe and their energy is going to be absorbed into their subconscious. And it's going to create a whole world of trouble later on down the road. What I need is I need people to start analyzing what kind of conversations are you having. This is what you need to do. Analyze what kind of conversations are you having. You know, try, try a test for a while. You know, get a piece of paper and, and say, okay, I'm going to talk to this person. What am I going to talk about? Write it down. Okay, what am I going to say about that subject? Write it down. And don't veer from it. Make sure there's nothing negative, okay? And be conscious of areas in your conversation where it could easily slide into a negative conversation about the topic that you picked. You know, for instance, if you're talking to somebody about your new job, there's always the opportunity to throw negativity in there from your former jobs. Well, is that guy like this? Because remember how he was. And then you start off on a tangent with negative vibrations and negative thoughts. And they start building up and they start creating another belief that you're going to have to watch this guy. And now you're going to start worrying about this guy. And it's all crap. It's all crap. What you need to do is analyze those conversations because what you're going to find out is that more often than not, you really don't have anything to talk about. How many things around you are positive? You say a lot. Okay, fine. Only talk about those things. And if they can't relate, well, that's too bad. Maybe you need to get somebody else to talk to. Or maybe you need to have another conversation with that person and explain to them why you don't talk about those kind of things and the effects that you found that happen on you. Never shove it down anyone's throat when you're progressing and evolving and, and developing. You don't want to do that. Never, 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 ever do that. It's not your job. It's none of your business whether or not they evolve. It's none of their business whether or not you evolve. What is your business is to evolve. And you don't do it by playing the game the same way you've always played it. Now back to this lady. The other day she came in, she, she said, you know, I had a couple of things that bothered me today, but for the most part, everything was fine. I know that I'm doing this and I know that I'm doing that. And then John comes out of his office, her manager, and starts talking to me in this tone and it really ticked me off. So I let her go and she had another four or five sentences that were in a negative phase about John. And then I stopped her and I said, do you realize what's going on here? You're blaming John for the tone that he took with you and the words he used. And she says, well, yeah, because that's not cool. He shouldn't talk to me like that. And I said, now, wait a minute. You're blaming John for his negativity and the way that he's treating you. And yet you just told me that you're responsible for everything. So what is it? Are you responsible for everything? Or are you at John's whim? Does John have the power over you? Or do you have the power over you? It could very well be that he does have the power over you, but he didn't steal it from you. You gave it openly. You may not have given it willingly, but you gave it openly by 
your beliefs and your thoughts and your deeds. So she looked at me for a minute and she says, yeah, but I'm only saying, and I stopped her and I said, yeah, but you're only saying the exact opposite of what you just said. You just said that you realize that you're in control. Well, if you realize that you're in control, how could he have possibly done anything to you that he's responsible for? Because if you are attracting negativity into your life, whoever or whatever brings that in, it's not their fault. It's your fault. It's always your fault. And again, if you're attracting positivity into your life, whoever or whatever brings that in is not responsible for that experience. You are. You are totally responsible for every single experience that you have in your life. So every time, once you get it, and I don't know how many of you listening to this actually get it, but if you do get it, start monitoring the conversations that you have and see how many of them have a high percentage of negativity. Because if they do, then you gotta watch yourself and you gotta analyze and you gotta go back and say, hey, what did I talk about to this person? What did I say? Wow, I was talking about blah when I should have been talking about blah, blah. I was talking about how horrible everybody is to me when I should have been talking about, do you know what I let happen? Now I want you to think about what I just said. How horrible everyone is to me versus what I let happen. Because that's what's going on. You're allowing this negativity to come in because you're attracting it. And how you're attracting it and why you're attracting it, it could be several factors. But the fact of the matter is you're attracting it. They're not horrible to you because it's God's plan. They're horrible to you because that's what you're drawing in. You see, that's, it's crucial that everyone understands that because that's key to living life on your terms. You can have anything in the world you want and you can have anything in the world you don't want. It really is up to you to use that free will and consciously and actively create your environment and not do it by default like we're taught to do. Love yourself. We're not taught to love ourselves. Daydream and fantasize every single day about stuff that you like and stuff you want to do. Forget what the teachers told you to stop staring out the window. Stare out the window. The school system is all wrong. We don't teach children how to be self-aware. We don't even teach children how to balance a bank account anymore, I think. I talked to a 27-year-old boy the other day, and the reason I was talking to him, he came to me and he asked me how to fill out a bank deposit slip. And I'm not kidding you. This is not just some hype for the radio show. He was serious, but he knew, he knew he should have known better because what did he say to me? He said, Dave, I think I have a really stupid question for you. How do I make out a deposit slip? And I kind of stared at him with a smirk. And he says, it really is that stupid a question, huh? And I said, well, I guess not if you don't really know, but I knew how to do that when I was 17 because they taught me that in school. The point I got here is you need to be aware of your true nature. You need to be aware of what's really going on around the world and in your life and in the universe. And you, you need to not lose that awareness on a day-to-day -day basis or on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. Don't lose that awareness. You know, if your day is going awesome, and then all of a sudden, kerplunk, 
some pile of crap gets thrown right in your lap, then you have to adjust. You know, there's an old saying about being in the middle of a forest fire and not getting burnt. And it's all about adjusting and not reacting. Adjusting and understanding. Go inside. Why did I want this pile of crap? What did I do to create this pile of crap? You have to be your own psychologist. You truly do. You have to be able to sit back, focus, and say, okay, what part of me needs work, needs help, eliminating this type of thing? And don't forget to write everything down. Keep logs, keep track. You are your own science experiment. But be mindful when you do get it. Be mindful of the conversations that you have. Because they will be your telltale sign because you'll be talking from your gut. And you may find that once you start analyzing your conversations, you'll wonder what it is you really have to talk about to somebody. Coworkers, for example, that you're not that friendly with. And I don't mean like you don't like them, you just, you don't socialize with them, right? But our human nature is to have a conversation because we always grew up watching people having conversations. So what do you have in common? The only thing you have in common is you work at the same company. That is the only thing you have in common, unless you talk to them and, oh, you know, I, I like golf, I like golf, blah, blah, blah. But for the main part of what you have in common is where you work. And that environment can be hostile or friendly, depending on how you want to run the show, because you are running the show. You know, this lady talks to me at length about this other lady who's, oh, woe is me. And she walks around with a slump and they're always writing her up and she's always complaining that they're against her and the whole nine yards. And I was like, well, that's why they keep writing her up, because she expects it, because she thinks they're against her, because she doesn't understand that she's creating all this. And why is this going on in her life? There could be many different reasons, but it all stems from the programming. And the paradigms that are created from the programming and those groups of beliefs that control your everyday move. But the initial step is that self-awareness and understanding that this is all you're doing. Yeah, there's other players in the scene, but you're the one directing, you're the one writing, you're the one producing. And you're the one casting the film. So if, you, if you're writing the script, don't yell at the actors because you don't like the lines they're reading. It's not their fault. You did that. If you're filming your own movie, don't yell at people moving sets around because you're the one that, that created those sets. This is all your experiment in life and everything. You know, I've mentioned many times, you manifest 24-7, whether you want to believe it or not, whether you control it or not. You're manifesting 24-7. The trick here is, how do you want to do that? How do you want to play that game? Once you know that it's inevitable, now you start using your free will and make a choice. You don't have to control your day, but don't go down the blame game road and bitch and whine about how bad the day was. If you want to talk about the day and, and what happened, have a conversation like, wow, you know, yesterday I just, I totally didn't care and I, I lived it by default and boy, am I sorry. Because this happened, this happened, and this happened. And I won't do that again. But don't, don't say that you get it and then complain and, and, and go off exactly the same as somebody who doesn't get it. And with this particular lady, when she does complain and goes off, that's exactly what you're looking at. If you had never heard her before and you only heard her then, 
you would say to yourself, well, it's too bad. I, this lady needs my help so bad because she just doesn't get it. And you get confused when you hear stuff like that because it's like you're, you got it, but you don't got it. And don't make the mistake. Just don't make the mistake of once you say to yourself, I got this, I understand, I'm in control. Don't make that mistake of slipping into those old school ways of complaining about, well, she said this and he did that and they don't like me and everyone's out to get me because it's all crap. And whether or not you get what's going on, it doesn't change the fact that all of that is still crap. You see, that's the thing. The concept that somebody is being mean to you is crap, whether or not you get it. It's crap. Because you're creating it. Well, okay, so they're being mean to you. Why are you, why are you doing that? You know, we can, we can uh, categorize people's behavior. And don't also, something I want to mention before I go, don't make the mistake of thinking that just because you're controlling it, means that people are going to act different. That's what I mean by being in the middle of a fire and not getting burned. Let's say, for instance, you have a real ass by everyone's definition because he's not getting it and he's doing what he was programmed to do. And on the surface, you look at that and you go, that is no way to treat people. He's not going to stop doing that. He's not going to change just because you understand. He's not going to change just because you now control your day. What's going to happen is he's just not going to be an experience in your day. But that doesn't mean, you know, and, and if he does come over and he's nice to you, it doesn't mean you've changed him. It means that your energy is out there and you won't allow any negativity in. So even when he does have to interact with you, you may find him stuttering uh, stalling, maybe mumbling a little bit instead of his usual rant. And that's because your I am presence, your energy, your the universe that you've created for yourself is controlling everything that happens. So don't make that mistake. Just because you're making a better day for yourself doesn't change people's attitudes and actions around you. It just means it won't affect you. That's all. Being in the middle of a fire and not getting burnt does not put the fire out. It only means you're not getting burnt. So whenever you have that fire and you're not getting burnt, don't make the mistake of thinking, well, all I got to do is this and the fire will go out because it won't. You know, you've just got your, your shield up and you can't get burnt. So... When you think you got it, analyze the conversations you have and see what's going on. Now, before I go, I want to mention to everybody that I recently teamed up with the uh, Bob Proctor organization, Proctor Gallagher Institute, and we've got a uh, meetup page, and very soon we'll be doing a mastermind get-together. But on this meetup page, it doesn't matter where you are, uh, you can be from all over the country. You don't have to be in L.A., even though it is uh, focused towards people in L.A. and, and Southern California. Um, we're going to try to make as many uh, webinars and call-in uh, seminars as we can so that people don't have to worry about travel and you can still get the fabulous information. And I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited because for about 20 years, I followed Bob Proctor. And I've incorporated a lot of his principles into my own uh, life coaching techniques because it just it's it hits the mark every single time. Bob is one of those guys that is a direct link to uh, Waddles and Napoleon Hill and Carnegie, all those guys. And Bob knows what he's talking about. And so it's a thrill for me to be associated with the company. It's a thrill for me to be close to being on the inside and our meetup group is going to explode. So if you uh, go to meetup, 
go to meetup.com and um, look for uh, groups that are near Torrance, okay, because that's the base address. Uh, I would say look for groups that are within 10 miles of Torrance and Bob Proctor. And that it should come right up. It's the Proctor Gallagher uh, Mastermind for uh, L.A. And sign up. Sign up. As soon as you sign up, uh, within a day or so, I'll, I'll send you a greeting email, uh, greetings on there. And um, you can uh, start getting in touch with some of the most successful coaches for success in the world. You know, Proctor Gallagher, it's a billion dollar company. And they're all over the world. And now, finally, after all these years of me helping people and teaching people, I get to be part of this great organization, which is, was one of the incentives for me to do it in the first place. So how awesome is that? You know? So I encourage everybody to sign up. Sign up. There's no obligation, and you're not paying for anything. And just go ahead and sign up and start taking advantage of all the cool stuff. All right? So... That's what I got today. That's what I got this time. Everybody, calm down, calm down, calm down. Until next time, I love you all. Good night.